Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm up to my ears in flint flakes. It's been like sub-zero temperatures and snow and ice for like a week at least. And I've been indoors in here trying to spall up chert and I got wheelbarrows full of rock. It's, uh, it's pretty wild territory in here right now, but um, other than that, I've been having a lot of fun flint napping. I've been making tons of bifaces I'm going to be offering. Uh, I got some heat-treated spalls and stuff. I just released a video, uh, like a material update. But, uh, so I ran the first load of heat treat, if you guys seen that last video. And a couple pieces coming out of there really caught my eye. Well, this one, this piece caught my eye when I, when I spalled it. I could tell it was a darker color and it was really solidified and it's it's out really next to the cortex it was a lot bigger nodule and it just i could tell it was really nice material when it popped off raw and uh, after heat treating it, it it looks like i don't know it looks really interesting so maybe we'll try to biface this one and uh if this doesn't work out i've got a couple more up here um really pretty pieces that I might might work these as well. So see how it goes. Okay, I'll just use direct percussion to biface this. Lead filled bopper here. Go ahead and get rid of those delicate edges. Start creating some contours, spacing my flakes out. Yeah, had a crack in it. Crack right out in the center of it. Hmm. Well, so much for that idea. Ooh, this one might got too hot. Or all oh, that's part of that same crack. Hmm. It looks like it was a, uh, a surface, a cone fracture. That's pretty wild. It must have did that in the heat. Looks like a. A cone scar right here from the surface an impact and that it expanded went all the way through the stone pretty interesting break Let's set that over there all right so we got a backup These rocks are still warm, <laughs> fresh out of the kiln or the turkey roaster. Man, if you watch this, Dan uh, Dan Collins, congratulations on your new kiln. That thing is sweet. Dan just posted a video. Danny Collins, uh, lithics and leather his channel name he bought a big old i think it was a little bigger than he expected uh kiln really nice one. my mouth was watering looking at that thing anyhow 
So I'm thinking maybe either Dovetail or Lost Lake for this thing. Either way, I gotta thin it out quite a bit. I think what I'm gonna do is use a smaller bopper. I've been getting along pretty good with it here recently. I can find it. size right here. I've been wearing this thing out recently. Getting used to it though, it's it's really handy to take these smaller flakes. You can hit more isolated areas once you get a little better with the accuracy. Um, or at least for me anyways, it seems like I'm, my accuracy is getting a little better so I can use these small ones and I'm sure that helps develop your accuracy as well. But uh, it's been working out really good for me. Getting flakes to go quite a ways. I have been working up a little higher though. I've been working up here quite a bit. A little closer to my body. Stay a little more accurate like that. Instead of reaching way down here. Up closer to your chest. Ooh, not like that. Not like that at all. back in there a little bit. Start to kind of regularize this over here and probably knock these high spots down a little bit and then come back across this way. I'm not really moving the edge much. I'm just kind of dulling it. And it's kind of staying where it's where it's at. I'm just kind of cheating with my angle and support to try to get these flakes not to step and do what I want them to. Dude. <laughs> She's looking at me like what? Okay, I did crunch that edge off there and moved it quite a bit. Try to run some thinning flakes in from the base. Could get one right there first. Actually, take one there. That'll give me a spot to hit right about here. Come across. 
up into there. That'll isolate that a little bit more. Another little one there. Go ahead and get rid of that. You don't want your platforms to be too strong or high when you're hitting the base. So it can cause too much shock. The stone is cooked to perfection. Come on. There you go. I think there's a little crack in there or something. There it went. down through here. Make sure I'm in frame. Golly, this stuff flakes like a dream. soft enough that it, the edge braids well too. I need to be really thinking about getting those flakes across there to thin this thing out. Kind of pitter pattering around, ain't cutting it. I need to move some meat. <laughs> Remove some meat. Edge is crushing on me now. Dovetail it is. Whoops. The shorter dovetail it is. <laughs> Let's 
kind of hanging out there a little too far. So let me trim that up a little bit. That was asking a lot, but it went. Beautiful. That really thinned that tip out. Good, good. further than that. There we go. There we go. You guys kind of see what I mean about you can be a little more accurate or hit smaller areas, be more precise about your flake removals the smaller tool once you start getting the muscle memory for it and stuff I've been using it like non-stop for a few days probably close to a week Ooh. all right so we got one side looking decent and this side's still kind of ugly And that's one way to move your edges pretty easily with these boppers and effectively old uh, Edbo I think is the name of his channel Edbo 23 or something like that he's got a bunch of good videos he's really good direct at direct percussion and he does that he moves the edge with his uh, side of his billet a lot I've seen other nappers do that too but the one video that comes to mind is him napping a turkey tail I remember him saying it was the thinnest one he'd ever done he's using a big I think it was this big bopper here it might even have been a homemade one he was moving the edge with the bopper I think Jay uh, Volante at uh, Wilderness Outdoors. What is the name of his channel? Yeah. I think it was Vision Quest or something. He changed it to Wilderness Outdoors. Maybe Wilderness Outdoor Quest. Anyways, Jay, uh, he naps like that too. He uses the, his billet to move the edge. He naps a lot of tough rock. Up north, he's up in Pennsylvania or somewhere, Connecticut maybe, Maine, somewhere up in there. All that rock's real tough up there, most of it. They got good rock too, I guess. 
Norman Skill shirt and Onondaga and Yes, they got some good ones. Okie doke. Well, I think I can come back across this way and get a few thinning flakes. Maybe a couple in here. Probably do those first. You get the edge dulled enough and you're not swinging too hard where this copper grabs that edge it'll grab a hold of some really irregular spots that you would think might lead to a problem but if it just grabs a hold of that edge just right it'll it'll put the pressure in there in that bulb will form without the edge crushing or anything bad happening it's just a matter of getting that getting a feel for how hard to swing and i'm supporting these flakes too so that Definitely helps them come off there, usually, until I jinx myself. Okay, they're starting to step right there, so let me back off the gas a little bit. I think I can get a nice one right in here. I think that rock might have kind of a weird grain or something to it right in there. I can see some little inclusions too. They're stopping those flakes. So to, in order to clear that off, I need to take some Make sure these flakes have some thickness. Next ones that I send through there. If I do, or I could try to come back this way, I guess. Go ahead and hit my base. Thinner flakes aren't wanting to hold together. There we go. worried about that one but it went was a good one. Ooh, that was even better one. If 
You just hit that one little spot right there. <laughs> Adjust that edge a little bit. Okay. I think we're about ready to not just baby. Just a little bit of pressure work. I want to bring it in right here a little bit just to help relieve that width that'll help help me not have to take my notches in quite so far. Okay, I'm gonna try to use a horseshoe nail to punch notch this. Straighten that out a little bit. What are you doing? Get out of there. Let's get out of
Okay, I'm gonna come right about in here. Hmm. Afraid that was a little bit too high there. Maybe we'll make a harden. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I might still be able to get a dovetail out of it. try harden I see the sparks fly off that thing. Getting a little bit tight in there. Yeah. Hmm. Heck, I might just roll with that. So I'll just run down and clean this up. And this up. And it should maybe do another pass on the other side.
I can put a bevel on it, I guess. Some of these had bevels. Oh, come on. Can almost get another percussion flake right there. Take this notch in or something over here. Yeah, that helped quite a bit, I think. Could possibly get another one, but Push my luck. I got a bad feeling about that. Feel my copper slipping on that edge. I think I need to straighten this base out. Got these really cool polka dots on the back side of the base right here. be considered a harden or not, but maybe if I touch up the notches, it's 
just a little bit. Looks better. It's looking a little bit better. A little bit more hardening. <laughs> That's a word. Hardenish. Quite a bit of pressure work to do, though. some of those real small serrations little micro serrations in there Trying to look, see what needs to happen there. Take that. Slide in a little bit. Definitely got a bevel to it. No doubt about that. Let's 
see if I can really clean this edge up now. Put some little micro serrations in there. All I'm doing is just looking for the thick spots. Push them down until they pop off there. There's a little bit of damage on the edge right here. Pushing straight down pretty much. Don't want them to go in there and cause any damage or step fracture. Okay, I'm going to give it a really light rake with the braider. back on this side I don't want these flakes to go very far just anything that's hanging down below center I'm gonna try to push a flake off or if the edge looks super thick Give another little light rake with the abrader. <clears throat> Over there. Okay, so I guess I'll just use my little uh, horseshoe nail. Flaker. Maybe. Actually, I'll just use this. This is a welding rod. I got mashed flat. Stuff grabs the edge really well. Really like it for notching. So, all I'm gonna do is just come through here and try to do some really short, small. Tight together serrations. Just one flake down. One flake and a rake. Just 
make it, try and make it just like he was gonna make it to use it. It's a pretty good motto to go by, I think, all the time. He could come back again and take another flake back the other way and open them up a little bit more, but I just want really fine teeth. That's nice. I like that. It's a pretty good looking pattern. It's hard to see in the camera. Actually sharpened the wrong side on that. I should have probably took them back this way. So I might, I might even come back, open them up a little bit more. Maybe not. Let's do this side and see how it turns out. They actually should have been coming from the other direction, but with the left hand bevel. But that's all right. I won't tell anybody if you guys don't. But you see why I went through and it pays to get your edge nice and regular without any damage on it before you try to do this, these real small serrations. Otherwise they don't want to come off very clean and it can be kind of a headache. It's pretty cool looking. Oh, I like it a lot. Love his little serrations. I think that might be my first successful harden. Cool beans. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. And uh, if you guys want some mesquite treated Buffalo River, shoot me an email. Brad's arrowheads at gmail.com. Thanks, y'all. Have a good evening.